Glastonbury Tor, an ancient site of magic and mystery. A fitting place, perhaps, to begin a bizarre latter-day mystery tale. The villains of the piece in this strange story are not immediately obvious, but the victims certainly are. First on the list, a few miles up the road from here, the Price family, who are convinced there's something very nasty in the air. We're at Churchill, just outside Gloucester. And it's been like a horrible nightmare. I think the last count we had, we had 53 fires up to date. I think the worst of all were the fires, but the flooding was just as bad because you'd go out and you'd come back and you'd find your whole bungalow absolutely flooded right through. In five frightening years, six washing machines, three television sets, two cookers and numerous small appliances have burst into flames. The family have also endured 53 fires and 73 floods. Um, these uh, one-inch compression fittings, as you can see here, uh, they actually unscrew, can, can completely undone, and the joint blows apart. Uh, light bulbs flying out, ceiling roses catching on fire. We've lost is it two or three beds complete due to the electric blanket at night. During this time we've been experiencing these problems, we've had the problems with the animals. Lots of occasions we've had young pups sort of six, eight weeks old, and they've more or less died instantly. The Price's home is close to an 11,000 volt transformer. So could the damage have been caused by unexpected power surges? The Midlands Electricity Board claimed it wasn't their fault. Although we've done exhaustive uh, tests and inspection on the local network, we found nothing irregular with his supply. Nevertheless, photographs of the damage to the house and to appliances showed that something or someone was at fault. Suspicion then fell on the prices themselves. Uh, right, well, this is a point where I suppose one of the worst fires took place. We managed to get the fire just about out and under control and rang for the fire brigade. And uh, they came with um, some police forensic experts. Immediately then, they really more or less accused us at that time of, uh, of doing it ourselves. And what did you think to that? Well, not a lot, because we knew darn well it just wasn't so. Uh, we knew perfectly well it wasn't. We knew that for a long, long time. The suspicion was based on a report from Capenhurst, the Electricity Council's research centre. The MEB had sent them just three pieces of charred wire. The question, had they charred from the inside, suggesting an electrical fault? No, said Capenhurst, they'd been charred from the outside. Being as I was the one that generally found it, or it happened when I was in the house, I've been pointed at very hardly and been very upset about it. But I can tell you, I haven't done it, and neither my son or husband. Throughout the worst of their troubles, the prices have really only had one supporter, local environmental health officer Jason Gillard. Some of the effects do take some believing in the nicest way possible. It's often said and very easily said, ah, it's all self-inflicted. But I can't come up with any sensible motivation for that. I mean, let's just quickly explore that, if we may. They're a self-employed family. If Mr. Price and his son don't do the work, they don't come up with the money. Businesses are in hard enough times at the moment without them having to come up here and cope with fires and floods and all the rest of it that's beset them. Mr. Price was by now developing a theory of his own. He wrote to the fire brigade. We remain convinced that the problems have been caused by some form of experimental work, possibly military, and that someone, somewhere, is aware of this, but not prepared or allowed to admit it. David Price, an agricultural engineer and essentially a low-tech person, now found himself forced to consider a high-tech explanation for his predicament. He began to keep a graph of fires and floods at his home, which eventually recorded as many as 10 incidents a day, but not every day. It never happened on weekends, on bank holidays, or never at night. It was always um, 
after about 11 o'clock in the morning and once 4 o'clock in the afternoon was over, he felt reasonably safe that nothing was going to happen again that day. The council's environmental health officer, Jason Gillard, supported the family view that outside forces were at work. I came into the house, I listened to the problems that had beset the Price family at that point in time, and it occurred to me then that most of them seemed to lie in a corridor running end to end of the house, just slightly diagonally of the ridge line. And by standing in that corridor and looking end to end, one immediately sees the aerial assembly on the hillside, some miles off, it's true. If you then, as I did, draw a line from there through the bungalow and just keep it going, it ends up in a certain installation in Cheltenham. He means GCHQ, the high security government communication centre a few miles away. Now, I've contacted them more laterally. I initially started with the um, radar establishment at Malvern because I thought really they would be more able to explain it perhaps, more likely to. The establishments involved, including British Telecom, who run the microwave station near the Price's home, all said it was nothing to do with them and refused to be interviewed. So in an effort to solve their problems, the Price's agreed to have a variety of experts look around. The rotating of light bulbs. Mm. In other words, we have rotating type phenomena of some sort. Mm. By stretching one's imagination to the very, very limits, one could possibly conceive some very high frequency effect. Meanwhile, out in the garden, talking with Mrs. Price, Dr. Sue Blackburn, a parapsychologist with an interest in poltergeists. Possibly there might be psychic phenomena going on here, but on what I've seen today, I very much doubt it. When it comes down to it, you're into the sort of James Bond field, really, to imagine that there would be some external cause. Has anyone the electricity... Dr. Frank Barnaby could be a latter-day Q, a former Aldermaston scientist, professor of physics, and director of the Swedish government's peace institute, he's a specialist in advanced military weapon systems. The electricity board has got chart recorders and records of graphs showing the voltage coming into the property. Will they show you those? No, they will not show them to us, but they do deny that there's any fault with the incoming supply. A small number of the many things that have happened here in this house could have been caused by deliberate action by someone in the house. But most of them, in your view, certainly couldn't have. Most of them could not. What do you think the probable cause was, then? Well, uh, on first sight, uh, the obvious thing that springs to mind is a large voltage, a pulse of high voltage, two or 3,000 volts, say, going up the electrical line into the house. But on the other hand, some of the explanations must be related to the house itself being irradiated by a large external source of radiation. Now, there are several possibilities there. Could be very high intensity radar, for example, military radar, or it could be a large, intense beam of microwaves. And would energy of this magnitude be military or commercial? Almost certainly military and that theory fits in with the obsession or secrecy of the electricity board uh, in, in this matter. There's absolutely no reason why they should keep secret about their explanation for the events, and obviously they must have an explanation, unless it were a question of military security. So he says advanced military radar is a real possibility. However, are the prices telling the truth? Enter the polygraph lie detector. How accurate is it? I feel that, uh, from my own standpoint, that uh, I'm a good 98 to 99 percent. I can't say 100, because there's always a possibility of human error. And it's good enough in this country, for example, to be used for positive vetting in the security services? Yes, sir. It is. Now, here, are, here's a standard form. I want you to look at this. I, your name will go in there, the date goes up here. Do hereby voluntarily without duress, coercion, promise, or reward of immunity. You understand of that? You understand that? Submit to a polygraph lie detector examination. Do you know who has caused any of the damage reported in this house? No. Now, have you ever deliberately caused any of the damage reported in this house? No. 
have you reported any false claims to anyone? No. So, Charles, having interviewed these three people and tested them, what conclusions have you reached? Well, it's my opinion based on the tests that I've conducted that they were telling the truth to the questions that I asked them. So you're satisfied that none of these three people has had anything to do with damaging this house in the way that's been reported? That's correct. The prices weren't alone. The strange happenings in their house attracted a certain amount of newspaper publicity. And that publicity prompted a letter from a family in Somerset. I thought you might take some comfort from the knowledge that someone else has very similar troubles. 50 miles away in a terraced cottage in Somerton live Frank and Nigel Patamore. Their home has been rewired to industrial standards several times and still the wiring melts. Amongst the appliances destroyed, five television sets. We've had boards coming into the house. The main boards catch fire in cascades of flame. We've had cables underneath the floorboards and in the ceilings catch fire. We've had uh, thousands of uh, fuses below. That's both in the plug tops and on the main supply board into the house. Um, hundreds and hundreds of light bulbs. Um, this amount here, they've probably gone sometimes within a week or even less. Our nearest neighbour has had uh, switches weld in his house, but no one, it's fair to say, has had any trouble on the scale that we have. Over the past five years, the electricity board has spent £50,000 trying to end the Patamore's problems. We've installed sophisticated monitoring equipment to uh, check the quality of the supply to the property. We have tried numerous uh, tests, uh, providing an alternative supply from another source, uh, a process of elimination, if you like, to eliminate parts of the system which are healthy and by doing so, we hope then to be able to locate the root cause of the problem. But the board couldn't find an answer. So, as in the Price's case, the Electricity Council's Capenhurst Laboratories were called in, and in a subsequent letter to the Patamores, the Electricity Board said, The damage could only have been caused by deliberate interference with the circuits and apparatus. Well, there was a knock on the door. Five gentlemen from the police came in. And uh, I said, what is all this about? And they said that the fire officer was rather perturbed that I might be found dead in my bed. The police then made it clear to me that they had a warrant and that they was going to search the house. And I said, well, there was no need to get a warrant. You could search the house in any, any way. And I turned out drawers and cupboards, all my uh, linen chests, and uh, we went right through the bottom of the house and the two bedrooms and the bathroom, and they did not find anything uh, which could possibly uh, cause any major damage. I was t uh, taken to Yeovil Police Station, um, where I saw a duty sergeant, and uh, I was then put in a police cell about three, three and a half hours before I spoke to anyone. Um, and then an officer interviewed me. Whilst I was being interviewed by the police, they kept referring to this report on the table, which was done by the Capenhurst Research College at Chester. I wasn't given a lot of detail as to what was in it. It was suggested that uh, one thing that could possibly have been done to cause the damage was for someone to have stood on a stool by our meter board and worked the trip up and down about six, seven hundred times in a minute. So what alternatives was the report exploring? I cannot really tell you. I wasn't allowed to see it. Did it look to you as if they were saying either it's the electricity that's at fault or it's you and ruled out all other possibilities? Yes, definitely. After uh, a total of eight hours in custody, I was released without charge. 
um, to reappear at the police station a month from that day. Okay, do you know who has caused any of the electrical damages reported at uh, this house? No. Did you deliberately cause any of the electrical damages at uh, this house? No. Have you reported any false information regarding the electrical damages at this house? No. Did you deliberately lie to any of the questions I just asked you? No, definitely not. It's my opinion that um, the questions I ask related to uh, their possible involvement in uh, the uh, electrical damages here is that they were not involved in it. We have had theories as regards radar from the Royal Naval Air Station at Yeovilton or probably guidance system of some sort from their aircraft. We have also been told the existence of the radio station, which is situated in, within eyesight of this cottage. Um, but the GPO external radio service have told us they do no transmissions whatsoever from the Somerton site. So this would seem or appear to rule this out. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to see you. How thank are you? you. Very fine. And yeah. you? Yeah, very well, thank you. I gather you're having some electrical problems. Oh, my word, we're having quite a lot. But as a physicist, I find it very hard to imagine how you or your son could produce what is obviously a surge of voltage. I yes. mean, the, the uh, incidents you describe, welding switches, uh, bulbs blowing, televisions uh, uh, blowing up and so on, it, it, all seem to be caused by a voltage surge. It, it, yes, they, 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 ha they admit that, and their uh, technician from uh, Bristol have proved that. I totally discount the possibility that any amateur could produce the effects that we've seen in this house. Well, what do you think the most likely cause is then? Well, it's certainly compatible with a heavy surge of voltage, a, a short period surge of voltage, produced, for example, by a very high-intensity radar beam of the sort that is being developed to counter stealth aircraft. But my favorite theory would be that it's a voltage produced by the simulation of an electromagnetic pulse of the sort that would be produced by a nuclear weapon. And I have two reasons for saying that. Firstly, that the military are very anxious and are doing a lot of research, spending a lot of money, developing methods to protect their ele electronic equipment and their weapon systems against the initial pulse of radiation which comes from a nuclear explosion. And they couldn't do a nuclear explosion to do it, so they would simulate it by other means, which would, be, which would uh, consist of a very highly focused, high-intensity energy beam. And this house may be in the path of such a beam. Dr. Barnaby's views are largely supported by Dr. David Baker, another eminent scientist, formerly with NASA. Britain itself is a very crowded island, and there's a lot of military research going on in a very small area, in a small space. It's not like the United States, where tests in the Nevada desert can take place hundreds of miles from the nearest farm. A lot of technology is now available to make things very difficult to see on radar screens. In order to combat that, you've got to keep increasing the power output of the radar that you use to find where those objects are. So aircraft are used to test against these radar devices, the ability to sneak in, to sneak under, to sneak around, or just what kind of shape and size they are on a radar screen. The main difference now, uh, compared to five years ago, is that those energy levels are many orders of magnitude higher than they were in those days. What effect would you expect to see in houses in the path of energy like this? It can melt plugs, it can disassemble wire, it can create harmonic vibrations that will unscrew um, pipes, it can create all the wealth of things that we are seeing uh, uh, reported by various people in various places. And uh, the overall effect can be to create a very bizarre situation where ordinary electrical lines are bursting into flames um, and where potting melts inside a structure that may survive. Um, ordinary domestic appliances can suddenly just explode. 
The best everyday example we have of the potential power of energy radiated through the air is the domestic microwave. Now, many of us have one of these in our kitchens, but have you ever thought what might happen if your kitchen ended up in a microwave? We have had voltages of anything up to 2,000 voltages, uh, 2,000 volts registered in this cottage. But I hasten to add, this is not a continuous 2,000 volts. It is an impulse voltage, which may last for only a microsecond. The problem occurs when we get a series of these impulses within a second. Um, and then they become almost continuous, and I think that is when the damage occurs. It's entirely compatible with what we would expect to see if research was being turned to application for using radio waves to experiment with the detection of small objects, low flying objects going very fast across the ground, um, in order to, to, to pick them up on radar screens as early as possible. And in fact, those kind of radar systems exist. So if the radar theory, now put to us by four independent scientists, is correct, why have two such different properties been singled out? The answer, according to Dr. Barnaby, could be that they're both right at the ends of local electricity distribution networks. The long incoming overhead wires, he says, would readily attract radiated energy. Both properties are also plagued by low-flying aircraft. Very, very noticeable up until a few weeks ago. Very noticeable. Quite bad in actual fact. Um, even times when you're, you can be down with a workshop there and you actually duck there that low. And you, you can't see them, but you actually duck because the noise is so uh, terrific. Are you all right, Mr. Price? Yes. And what effect does it have on people and animals? Well, for a long time, it's been known that the effect on human beings can be quite complete and catastrophic. And in fact, there are um, servicemen walking around today who um, are um, sterilized because of the um, effects that they suffered in the tests that were conducted by this country during the Second World War. Could these effects be fatal? These effects could be fatal. They have been tested against animals in research laboratories in the United States. The things we're now thinking about may sound fantastic, but they're the only ones we have left. Well, in the interests of national security, clearly, especially in Great Britain, which has an, has an almost unbridled paranoia about discussing aspects of defence and the, the protection of these islands, um, there are um, unwilling servants of the new technology who are unable to discuss matters which relate to what are thought of as exotic devices. In Swansea, there's another scientist who, while not discounting the military theories, says it's not patriotic to discuss them. Though I've worked on some of these aspects um, from time to time, um, you know, one is, of course, always um, under the Official Secrets Act, even if you don't sign it. And uh, you, you never talk out of turn. This is a basic school rule you have. We've always had this feeling that there's a cover-up somewhere. I don't know where. Um, I wish I did know, but we've always had this feeling there's been a bit of a cover-up. And you're the patsy? Well, exactly. How do you feel about that? Not very good. Um, I don't know how they'd feel about it. Uh, I wish to God it would happen to them. They'd, they'd really be getting on a bit more about what it felt like. <laughs> I think it is a matter that should be exposed for public debate as to whether in achieving what we feel to be a supreme tool for defence, we are in fact creating in what is an enduring peace, thank God, um, a situation which is infinitely more harmful to our social environment. The environment that is described here by the events seen and felt and experienced by real people in real situations um, is very similar to converting the whole of the British Isles into, into a microwave cooker. The defence of the realm is a very responsible exercise, and anyone engaged in this mustn't take it lightly. And if you sort of set around implying that uh, they're doing things which are um, untoward and such like, um, people would be very upset. I mean, it's the same as if you asked somebody a personal question. But the effects on the prices and the patamores have been very personal indeed. 
They say that secrecy in the corridors of power has led to much unnecessary suffering by two ordinary families. The electricity boards deliberately kept them in the dark. The GCHQ said it wasn't them. So too did the Royal Signals and Radar Establishment. The Ministry of Defence say they too are not to blame. Britain's penchant for secrecy means this programme can only offer the experts best guesses as to what's really going on. So, who done it? Nigel Patamore, arrested during the making of this film, was told today that he's been released from police bail and need not now report back to the police next week. Thank you.